So other than the status quo or a top-down government-controlled healthcare system, what options are available to us to redesign healthcare in the United States? The central tenets would be accessibility to everyone or universal coverage, affordability, portability, a system that encourages personal responsibility for healthy lifestyles and wellness, and one that does not suppress innovation which would advance treatments and cures and make the system more efficient. Can this be done without going to a single-payer healthcare system? I would argue that it can be done, and there's certainly plenty of evidence in our current health care system and examining the failed policies of other health care systems that would lead us to believe we could fashion a health care system for the 21st century that would be the model for other countries. We've talked about why costs are so high and competition in health care and how competition in health care could really work to generate more efficiencies within the system. By realigning competition to provide value to you, the patient, we could have a healthcare system that's more efficient and controls cost. What in a single payer system is going to propel you to adopt a healthy lifestyle? As long as your care is being paid, there's nothing that's going to make you go out and exercise more or stop smoking or eat better food. So we have to have a system that would incent you to have healthy behaviors as well. Were we to adopt a system where we could purchase health insurance across state lines and eliminate the mandated benefits, we could bring the cost premiums of health, care, health insurance down dramatically. And what do I be, mean by that? Each state controls health insurance within that state. So the actual competition in health care is very limited. You don't have access to 1,300 health insurance companies as they do in Congress. If you were able to purchase health insurance through the internet or a broker like you could auto insurance or homeowners insurance, you could purchase a policy that is tailored to your needs. For instance, every mandated benefit and provider that a state requires in order to offer health insurance within that state costs one to three percent increase in its premium cost. Let's say that the government sets a basic minimum for health insurance in the United States that you're allowed to vary the deductible as you do in auto insurance. So the deductible could be 1,000, 3,000, or 5,000. And you could have a policy that after the deductible would pay 100% of catastrophic, including mental health, preventative, and immunizations. You could have a policy for under 2,500 per year. If you wanted to add on more benefits and you wanted to have a cushier, more luxury policy, the premiums would cost you more. But how could the low income or the homeless afford such a policy? You would have a pre-credit or pre-fund by the government. We're already subsidizing this care, so it makes sense that the cost would go into an individual health plan, and through the individual health plan, you would purchase your health insurance. This certainly would require some education and information to be given to people, but no way do I think people are too incompetent or too stupid to be able to access the health, health insurance system. We've certainly seen this with seniors and Medicare Part D. Even though they were elderly, they had the skill set utilizing their family, AARP, and other resources to be able to navigate through Medicare Part D, and each year they go through their drug profile and change their uh, um, insurance company or provider so that they can afford the lowest cost. The same thing can happen for health insurance. What about those with higher um, incomes? For a higher income, we should have the same tax treatment to the individual as we do the employer. So you should be able to get a tax deduction if you're a higher income person to purchase your own health insurance. As we would migrate away from employer mandated or employer covered health insurance, we would help reduce administrative costs and it would be portable. The current system isn't portable since it's employer based and it's employer based because they have, they have a favorable tax treatment from World War II. Providing that same tax treatment to individuals would allow them to migrate from an employer-based plan to an individually owned plan. What about pre-existing conditions? Well, the health insurance industry in December 2008 made a proposal to the administration that they would provide universal coverage. They would guarantee coverage, they would drop the exclusions for pre-existing conditions, 
and the premiums would be the same based on age, geographic location, and the benefit structure. For some reason, this plan was never brought forward or presented to the American public. If we allowed guaranteed renewability, meaning if you were to purchase a health insurance policy, you could actually purchase a rider that would allow you to have guaranteed renewability year after year, regardless of whether or not you had a change in your health status. This would ensure that people would get coverage if they wanted to change their health insurance policy because premiums were increasing. This is already done in Congress, and they already have guaranteed renewability. In addition to which, if we migrated to this kind of a system, we could have a fallback that says, if we don't um, have access to health care and have low premiums that make it affordable, then we have a fallback to go to a public option. And this could be a trigger for a, a different health care system to come into play. So by offering the same tax treatment to individuals, allowing health insurance to be purchased across state lines, having a basic policy and then adding on to the policy in accordance with your needs, we could bring down the cost of health insurance dramatically. Within a person's uh, individual health plan, they could then afford to pay doctor's visits out of their health plan. They could afford to pay their deductible. So for instance, for low-income people or for any individual, the account would be $5,000 to $8,000 and for a family, ten dollars to $15,000. Therefore, we're ensuring that there's enough money within the account to both pay the deductible should they have a catastrophic occurrence in the first year and also to pay for doctor's visits which would not necessarily have to be covered out of your health insurance. When you cover everything under health insurance, then the premiums go higher. Now, what about alternative medical therapy? Nothing within the current uh, redesigning of the healthcare system allows you to go to any allopathic or alternative provider. If you have the money in your account, you can choose which provider you want to go to. If you want to use acupuncture or meditation or herbal treatment or massage therapy or chiropractic or podiatric therapies, you could access any of these types of therapies and it wouldn't have to be mandated through the government. Again, each time the government, be it state or federal, mandates a benefit to you or a provider to the health insurance, it caused the cost to go up. But in a plan such as this, you could tailor uh, the type of treatment, the type of provider, and you would have much greater choice and flexibility. Also, the account could roll over from year to year, so the funds in the account could accumulate. And you could use your, uh, your account uh, revenues for uh, a gym membership, for bariatric surgery for weight loss, you could use it for uh, different alternative treatments for weight loss, smoky, smoking cessation, or any other type of health care that you felt you desired or wanted. If you were a very healthy person, this encourages you to continue a healthy lifestyle. If you're a couch potato, it incents you to get off the couch and do some uh, exercise and uh, watch your diet and tailor your diet such that you can reduce your health care premiums and also that you can allow the account funds to grow. Perhaps after several years, you would have enough money in the account to afford LASIK eye surgery or uh, to afford cosmetic surgery. And you shouldn't be prevented from using your health care dollars in the manner that you want. What about tort reform? Certainly, the medical malpractice climate in the United States adds 1% one to 2% to the cost of health care. That does not include the cost for defensive medicine. If we had tort reform and a system where people are paying for their health care out of their debit card, that would force all providers to have a better relationship with the individual patient. They would be more likely to discuss options and there are numerous health studies that show when this relationship exists, patients actually choose the lower cost option almost all of the time when they have a better relationship with their provider and we discuss the merits of different uh, procedures, different treatments, and different options. Almost always the lowest uh, healthcare option is chosen. That could be observation for some people. That could be a surgical treatment for other people. I know you may have a lot of questions about what we just discussed, but in a short video, there's just not enough time to be as expansive as I would like to be. But I could answer any questions or comments that you might have if you contact me through my blog, Facebook, or Twitter. Please feel free to do that, and we can continue this conversation on healthcare in a candid and objective fashion. Thank you.